Hello and welcome to my frog tutorial. To understand why I wanted to create a frog like this, um, you'll have to see these photos which I found on Tumblr which I fell in love with. I mean, how could you not want to own something like this? So in the midst of some weird shit happening in January, I feverishly created uh, five frogs and then I made another one for this video, but I keep accumulating them. And I will probably continue to accumulate them until the day I die. So, if you would like to uh, accumulate one of these frogs yourself, uh, keep watching and I will show you in the best way that I can. So, you will need some fabric for the body of your frog. I've got a pile of this orangey yellow stuff. Some white fabric. You don't need a huge amount, so I just use a bit of scrap. Some black fabric. Again, you only need a tiny bit, so just some scraps. Some black and white thread which here they are, out of focus. A needle, which here I have way too many, you only need one. <laughs> and again, out of focus. Some stuffing, you can cannibalize a pillow for this, or just buy some. Some fabric scissors. A crap ton of pins. A sewing machine, you can hand sew this, but I think it makes it a lot easier. And the pattern, which I'll find some way to link in the description. It's essentially two pieces that you can use to then make the three pieces that you'll need. The first is this curved piece, which you'll use to cut two pieces of fabric for the top half of your frog. Think of the curved bit like a little froggy spine. And the second is this shape with a straight edge, which will line up with the fold on a folded piece of fabric so that when you unfold it, you'll have a single piece with matching halves. You can also cut out two little circles, one bigger and one slightly smaller for the eyes. And here's an ominous zoom. A ruler is also a good thing to have, especially for the seam allowance. So first step is to cut out the pattern pieces. I'm just cutting out a smaller piece of fabric from the big piece I have. Make sure you cut out a big enough piece so that there's enough room to leave a one and a half centimeter seam allowance around the entire edge of the pattern. I then also like to iron the pieces so that it's easier to trace the patterns onto the fabric. For the base piece of your frog, take what is essentially half of the pattern and line the straight edge up with the fold on a folded piece of fabric and trace around the edge. But don't cut it out yet. We still need to add a one and a half centimeter seam allowance so that when you sew it, there's room on the other side of the seam to make sure it doesn't unravel. And this is me just showing you that when you unfold it, you'll have one piece. All right, so next step is seam allowance, which is that orange layer around the edge. So for this, take your ruler and mark out 1.5 centimeters from your first outline and go all the way around the shape and then connect them up to form a second line. This is the line you should cut around. The inner line is where you'll sew on later. And again, make sure you don't cut on the fold. We only want one base piece. And there you can see the inner line and then the outer line, which is the one you'll cut around. Now we need our two top pieces. They're the exact same shape, so I like to put two pieces of fabric on top of each other so that I only have to trace and cut once. Again, you'll need to trace the pattern piece first and then go around marking 1.5 centimeters out from the inner line and then join it up to make the seam allowance. And here's me speedily tracing out the uh, outline. I'm actually this fast at drawing. I'm just that awesome. And once you trace the seam allowance for the two top pieces and then cut them all out, you should end up with three pieces that look like this. The next step is sewing the two top pieces together. So you need to place them so they match up like this and then pin along the top line. So that curved line uh, which I'm pinning right now. What I'm trying to show in this clip is that we're only sewing at either end of this line. We need to leave a small gap in the middle, about four centimeters or so. This is so that when you turn the frog right side out, there's a way for you to put all this stuffing in. You can leave the gap in another part of the seam, but I found that this part is easiest to sew up at the end as it's the straightest seam. So here I'm starting about two thirds of the way down this curved line and then sewing from there to the end and making sure to do a little reverse stitch before and after the sewing. And the reverse stitch basically just sort of holds the seam in at when you start and when you finish so that it doesn't unravel once you start to move the fabric around. 
I think all sewing machines should have a little button that you might you just sort of hold it and it reverses the stitch um, and then you just keep sewing as normal. And I'm just using a straight stitch by the way. And then here I just come back and start at the beginning and then sew a little bit making sure to leave that gap from where the other one, the other stitch uh, starts. Sorry if I'm over explaining everything, I just want to make sure that everything makes sense because some of these things I guess can seem a bit unfamiliar to people starting out with sewing. And so here hopefully you can see the two stitches at either end and then there's a nice big gap in the middle for the stuffing later on. And what better way to demonstrate a hole than to put your finger in it. So there I go. I then like to fold it open uh, right side out and then iron along that seam just to press it flat so that when you come to sew the hole up later on you've got a nice sort of flat edge to guide you. Alright so now for some weird lighting I'm going to show you how to make the eyes. So I've already cut out the black and white circle, a smaller black one and a slightly bigger white one. And then with a black thread, I'm coming up through the back, up into the black part, and then going back down into the white, but right next to the black edge so you kind of can't see it. And then you want to go all the way around the black circle to attach the black part to the white part, and you get an eye. Once you've gone all the way around, you want to flip it over and then tie a knot in the back. I usually just go back under the seams at the back and just sort of loop it around and around, pull it back through again and then just tie a knot and then cut the thread short and there you go. And here it is again, just from a slight different angle. So yeah, under those seams at the back and pull it a bit and then you'll get a loop. And so you go back through the loop, pull it tight and you've got a knot. and snip and then do that again and you'll have two eyes so when you're choosing a spot to put the eyes you want to keep in mind that there is a seam allowance that will be sort of tucked inside the frog once you've sewed it um, so keep in mind that there's that one and a half centimeter allowance so choose a spot that's kind of from the inner line to the seam and sort of in between those two points and so here's where i've chosen to put mine to sew the eye onto the body, you want to take a white thread this time, but using a very similar method, or the same method, essentially, as with the black part onto the white part of the eye. So you just come up through the back, so the knot is inside the frog, and then you come back down right next to the white, and then you just go all the way around. Um, for this one, because you're sort of placing it in a spot, I've chosen to go to sort of do four corners first and sort of tack it in place and then go back around to sew it on, which I will show you in a second. So here are those first four initial stitches just to keep it in place and then you go back around to sew the rest of it onto the frog. Which will end up looking like this and then you just repeat that on the other side and then you'll have two eyes. The way I like to match up the eyes on both sides is you just hold it up to something bright like a window or a lamp and then you can see where one eye is and then you just match up the other one and suddenly your frog can see. Now we need to take our newly formed top piece and place it right sides together with the bottom piece. So right sides together means the side that you want on the outside facing the other side that you want on the outside. So in this case, it's the side with the eyes, goes like faces into the middle and then on the base part of the frog you'll want to have the, the outline that you drew on the outside so that when you flip it inside out all the outline will be on the inside and you won't see it. 
So anyways, match up the two pieces and then you want to pin all along. Um, I've probably used too many pins, but you know, you, you're better safe than sorry. And you can see I've also pinned the seam allowance on the top piece so it flattens so that when you sew it, uh, it makes it a bit easier. And then you pretty much just want to sew a straight stitch all the way around. Um, you can sort of use the outline of the uh, pattern piece as a guide to sort of where you want to sew, but roughly one and a half centimeters from the cut edge. And here's the finished seam that goes all the way around. Now this next step may seem a bit weird and arbitrary, but I promise you it's really necessary. So you basically want to go around the seam allowance, cutting little triangles into it. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. Of course I couldn't get the shot in frame. So here's one little triangle and you basically want to do something like that all the way around, just making sure you don't cut into the seam, obviously, otherwise that would unravel everything. And then you should end up with something like this. Basically what these little triangles do is it means that the seam allowance doesn't sort of hinder the way that the seam moves so you basically get a lot of extra flexibility and when you flip it the right way out it will actually be the correct shape and the seam won't sort of pull it and make weird wrinkles and everything. And now we want to use the hole that we left to flip the entire thing inside out. So you basically just sort of gently pull everything through and then you can use some scissors or something to sort of poke out those hard to reach shapes. And then here's an empty frog, ready for stuffing. With the stuffing, I like to do it in very small pieces and then gently press them into sort of starting from like the feet and then working your way through the limbs and then into the main body. If you sort of press it in too hard, you'll compact it and then it will be kind of hard and less squishy. I guess it depends on the kind of texture that you want for your frog, but I like mine quite light and fluffy. There's sort of an art form to putting stuffing in, in a regular shape like a frog. You kind of have to press it in and then feel it around and mold it to it's the texture that you like. All right, so now you have a frog. It's mostly finished, but he does have an alarming hole in his spine so we'll fix that with the ladder stitch all right so in my next diagram i've drawn these green dots which are the entry points of your needle and then these pink dots which are the exit point of your needle got it cool to start you want to enter your needle from the inside of the frog where all the stuffing is so that once you've tied it up the knot is underneath the fabric it's also worth noting that the seams in this diagram are a bit big for what you'll actually want i just made it this big so you can actually see what's happening um, but i'll show you in the next clip how far apart to actually put the stitches anyways so you come up out of that first pink hole and then you insert your needle at the first green point you slide it along in that fold of the seam allowance right under where i ironed it earlier and then exit at the next pink point now you've hooked one side of the hole you want to reinsert your needle at a point directly across on the other side of the hole so your thread is about a right angle to the sides of the hole and then you repeat this all the way up the fabric which as you can see creates this ladder pattern then you want to pull tightly closing the opening now here's some footage of me closing the hole which will hopefully enhance your understanding and then i'll show you how i finish this stitch also i realize i've said the word hole like way too many times so just uh, ignore that so again up at the end of the hole and then you want to slide your needle in and out of that crease that makes the edge of the hole So 
sorry, I'm just skipping through some of the uh, unfocused parts because clearly I've never done this before. And so here you can see the beginnings of that ladder pattern. Okay, once I pull it through. And here's how it looks when you pull it tight. Now to tie it off. Uh, the way that I do it is I come back under the last stitch, which is a little hard to see here, so feel free to look up a ladder stitch tutorial which with maybe better camera work, but essentially I come back under the last ladder rung and then through the loop that's created and then pull tight. and then maybe do that a few more times until it's very secure. Then to hide the end of the thread, I go back between the seam into the frog and poke the needle out the side. And then I pull a little tight so that the thread is taut and then cut the excess. Then wiggle the fabric so the tiny bit of thread is pulled back inside the frog. And there you have it, a wonderful little frog to help you pass the time while we're all stuck at home. And once you finish one, maybe make them some friends. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you are at all interested in any of my other creative endeavors, you can follow my Instagram at Blue Rose Inc. I also have a TikTok, which is uh, at Grease Baby. And if you like this video, maybe consider subscribing because hopefully I'll make other stuff like this. Anyways, thanks again for watching. Stay safe and have a good night.